Hey there, it's Kristen with thewaywardhome.com, and I spend half the year in my camper van and half on my sailboat, and I hope to inspire you to live nomadically too. So today we're talking to Ben Quesnel, a van lifer and explorer who left a lucrative corporate job in tech to create his own brand new company, which I'm really excited to talk about today. It's a van life marketplace called Simpler Ways, which we'll get into in a little bit. But Ben, first, thanks thanks so much for, for joining us on the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me on the podcast. It's an honor. Yeah. So first of all, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, your story and what inspired you to first start living the van life yourself? Well, it's a it's a great question. So I'm, I'm originally from France and I moved over to the US in 2013. Um, I was working in San Francisco and after a few years, I kind of got tired of it. Um, I was look, looking for new ways to spend my weekends and travel a bit more. And uh, that's how I came came up with the idea of buying an old Volkswagen van and restore it. And the idea then was to use it for weekend trips, maybe you know, go surf down the coast, explore a bit California or beyond. And uh, as I was doing this restoration, I started meeting more and more people that had done this and then moved into their van full time. That was in 2017. And uh, and I decided that it would be fun to try and go beyond just uh, the beyond California. And so in 20, uh, 2018, my first long trip with the van was going down to Baja, California. Um, it was going to last a few weeks. I said I stayed there two months. And then when I came back, I put everything I own in the van, uh, left my apartment in San Francisco and uh, went for a six month trip that ended up being four years now and counting. That's amazing. And so at first, were you still working remotely for your for your tech kind of jobs or did you quit those jobs? Uh, I quit I quit that job uh, as I moved into the the, the van full time. Uh, I think part of the appeal for me was to be a little bit a bit more in control of my finances and my 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 uh, my work. And so, as the moment I moved into the van, I started uh, a new activity as a freelance marketer. Gotcha. Cool. So you became a freelancer, and what was that transition like to go from you know living in San Francisco to living in your van? What was that like for you at first? Uh, in terms of everyday life, it was really awesome. Like it's really what I wanted. Like I, I, I think like having, having, having had the chance to like try it out a little bit before, and being in California, which is one of the best states for, in terms of like you know three, four, five hours escapes. Um, I, I really knew that this is what I wanted for me at that moment. Uh, the professional transition was also exciting. Uh, I'd say more challenging because everything was so new for me, and and you know I had to. Uh, you know, be in charge of getting new clients, be in charge of making sure I could pay the bills at the end of the month. Um, so definitely was like a bit of a, a bit more of a transition, but I'm very, very happy. I, 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 I tried it. <laughs> totally. And so when you had the job, you know, the regular job, um, how were you feeling in that role? Were you ready to, to break out? Were you getting kind of bored or what were your thought processes when you were living this kind of normal lifestyle? <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, for me, it was not so normal because I had already, you know, gone all the way from Europe to the U.S. So I think the 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 first the first five six years of that experience were really awesome. Like I don't think I left because I felt uh, bored necessarily in my functions. Um, but it's probably um, I was kind of ready for a new challenge professionally. I think like uh, it was not so much like the the topics I was working on or or the companies I was working with, but rather. Um, the excitement of being able to be more in control of uh, of my time, like you know, I wanted to steer away from the nine to five kind of like grind, and 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 wanted to be more in control of my time. Totally. And so you were traveling in your van, and did you just stay in North America, or have you done like van life and other places as well? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Well, what happened is that so in 2019, as I said, I kind of started this six month journey. Uh, the moment I hit Alaska, I was like, hey, like I. I really want to do this Pan American thing, you know, like I made it all the way there. Why don't I try and head south? And so um, at the second or well, the last quarter of 2019, I, I was on my way down to uh, to Panama. And I think like part of me was like, if I make it to Panama, I might as well put that van on a container. Um, and then 2020, well, we started the way we all know <laughs> Uh, COVID hit. I was uh, I had been spending, I think like I was three months in Baja. I had put my van on a... Uh, ferry over to mainland Mexico, and that's when the pandemic started. I was in Sayurita in Nayarit, so I stayed there for a couple of months with the van, and then obviously I saw that things were not going anywhere, so I decided to go back to Europe, left my van there, 
and uh and because i had all this time on my hand because europe was um was like you know as topped as uh, on our on our side of the pond um i decided to buy another van and use this time i had on my hand to restore another volkswagen van uh and that's how I started this kind of like bicontinental journey of having a van on both uh, sides of the atlantic and so I do have a van there. I traveled for uh, three and a half months while I was there in 2020 and uh, decided to keep the van there. So like uh, the two summers ago, I finished the build and traveled with it for a month and a half. Last summer, I didn't get to travel that much with it, but did for a couple of weeks. And the idea is that like now I have this home on wheels in my uh, in my home country that I can use to explore uh, all those places that I'm yet to I'm yet to go to um like northern uh northern europe eastern europe germany greece uh morocco is a dream of mine um so the idea is that like I, i'm i'm able to do so whenever i go back to europe which usually is like once a year that's amazing and i think a lot of people are curious about van life in europe um what's it like over there is it harder or more difficult than or easier than being in the in the states uh, I wouldn't say it's easier, uh, but it's not as hard as I thought it would be, uh, especially in French, which has a reputation of uh, of having like difficulties with the, uh, I mean, it's just the, 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 it's just everything is like smaller right and and every every um every village is like uh, right in one like a corner of like, you, you want you will have less. Um, extended spaces right and so uh i was worried about this and 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 it makes the whole experience richer um in other words like uh you know you will have less you won't be driving five hours on a flat like pipeline like you would be in the us uh but every time at every corner you'll you'll have a new a, a new place to visit which will have its own culture its own architecture food you know it's just very rich culturally and it makes the experience very rich in its uh, in its own way and i think the whole uh, the whole space is changing quite a bit in europe in adapting to this new like van life uh, trend that has arrived a little later in europe um and so now there's a lot of like businesses, new campgrounds, the whole market is adapting to it and uh, and the 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 jurisdiction are adapting as well <laughs> cool. That sounds super fun. I'd love to get to go to Europe and, and rent a van and try it out sometimes. So it's good to hear that it's up and coming over there. So yay. <laughs> and I also saw on your Instagram that, that you have a uh, forerunner. Is that yours that you're converting? Absolutely. That's a new project of mine uh, because I decided to spend, I was spending all, all my winters in Mexico and some people buy a sailing boat. I think like I, I'm I'm not there yet in terms of adventurism, but hopefully someday. And so instead, instead of like driving the 40 plus hours from, from Oregon or, or California all the way to Baja, I decided to uh, get a truck there and restore it there. And I spent like a, almost what, five, four or five months in, the, in, in Baja last year. Um, and I, I, I do plan on spending like more time there and maybe maybe ship it to mainland exploring like the this side of the border a little bit more. And uh, for that, I, I thought that like a, a truck that uh, has a better uh, track record of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, being, being more capable off road uh, would be would be a, a better option. So I do have now a third vehicle, which. Um, you know, I'm a little embarrassed about, but it's really, you know, the idea is the continuity of having a home on wheel where I spend time so that like, I don't have to move those like vehicles around that much. Yeah, it totally makes sense. And you have very tiny homes. It's not like you have mansions in every country. So <laughs> <laughs> you are still living a very minimalist lifestyle in these vehicles. So yeah, the four, the forerunners probably your the smallest interior, right? Yeah, it's a it. It was an interesting build too. I think like the challenge of uh, building something on an even smaller uh, footprint. Uh, I I thought I thought it would be an interesting one, and uh, I'm really excited about sharing the progress on this because like I had a custom popped up, and like the interior is actually you know optimized in a way that uh, makes it actually comfortable, and uh, and it's definitely you know a rig that is for places where you can spend as much time outside of it as possible, like versus like. A, a winter rig, for example. Yeah, very true. That makes total sense. So yeah, so are you still um happy with this nomadic way of life, or what? Do you, what are your thoughts about it? Absolutely, I think like uh, what I found for myself, especially with COVID, that kind of like put a put an end to it. I think that uh, there's a there's an importance for everybody to real to kind of like find find the right balance uh, for themselves. I think like being on the road full time literally full-time was exhausting uh, for me. 
And uh, what I mean by this is exhausting, like not so much from a psychological standpoint, but it's just like physically, right? Like uh, being on the move permanently. Um, and so what I found for myself and everybody has their own truth, right? Like, and, and that's important that you find your own um, is that I wanted to be able to uh, apply this, like that idea of slow traveling, like to a, a, a further extent. And by, by this, I mean that uh, staying in a place for a long period of time, uh, still having a vehicle, eventually like renting out a place or like uh, when I was in Nayarit, I said in this really cool like campground that, you know, I had my little space. Um, so I was able to like escape if I wanted to, but I got to really know some people, uh, know the, the local culture, like have my own habits and stuff. And then whenever, you know, I felt like I was uh, ready for the next uh, next semester i just moved on and uh and since then i've been applying this for myself like i, I think uh, um and and having multiple vehicles has allows me has has allowed me to do so as well like uh, uh you know spend more time i felt like i i was not connected enough to my home country anymore and now i have this option to stay longer period of times there but i can still discover it uh in a way that i had not uh, been doing before which means just going around, like learning about local cultures and rediscovering spaces, including spaces that uh, were supposed to be m my home. Um, and 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 I really hope that I'm able to uh, keep that balance of like, you know, uh, permanent movements, all the while respecting my own, uh, you know, needs for, for, for rooting. Yeah, so you found like a perfect balance for yourself between staying in one place and doing some traveling, it sounds like. So far, so good. So far, so good. And if it changes someday, if I'm these change, I'll, I'll be fine as well. That's what's wonderful about these lifestyles is they're very fluid and dynamic and we can kind of do what we want to suit our, our mood. It's really, the freedom's amazing, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. No, no wonder why uh, I, I keep, I, you know, it was supposed to be six months. I'm still in it because I think it's, uh, I found, you know, the, 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 the best lifestyle I could think of for myself right now. That's so cool. And yeah, I was really excited to learn about your website, uh, your big project that you've been working on. How did you get the idea? Or first of all, I guess we should talk about what is the product. Um, tell us all about uh, what you developed. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd be very happy to. Um, uh, basically, like the um, being in my third third build now, I realized at least like when I first started it, that like the resources back then were pretty scarce. And I say what well, back then I sound like I'm I'm, I'm very old, but uh, back in 2016, 2017, it was a very early stage of uh, the van life as we know it, and uh, and so there was not that much like resources uh, that you could find, and uh, and I've been very very fascinated by how the market has evolved since then, um, and as I was kind of trying to like uh, you know go go from like freelance to maybe starting my own entity, I realized I would love to apply my expertise, which is like online communication, marketing, um to 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 this new this new passion of mine. And uh and so I just like put you know two and two together eventually I was like well if there's no there is there there is like we're seeing more and more like resources and companies doing a lot of things but there's no centralized resources for all this to be in the same place and so I wanted to create a platform in which I basically a platform I wish existed when I first started right like a platform that's really DIY friendly but it's also serving people that uh not don't not necessarily have like the expertise or like the tools or the time i want to reposition the platform in a way that uh, provides uh diy tutorials uh kits um and, and and options and 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 knowledge basically for anyone who's willing to get into it and that doesn't have the tickets to spend on a um on a build uh, pro that's pro made professionally um, and I think that uh, at the platform now serves that purpose pretty well. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy about like the direction we're taking. Yeah. And so what kind of products can people find on your site? So right now the, the, the site is divided in two main sections. The first one is uh, for, for, for people's bills. So I think our, our key products are the, the kits. We have, uh, we have DIY kits. So basically it's kits, like think of the IKEA for van life um, for, for about like eight types of vehicles now and we keep expanding. Um, and this is really the, the idea is like, all right, like you've got an empty vehicle. You don't know how to, uh, to, to build it. We offer, uh, the, the, what we think are the best kits on the market. 
Uh, and the other section of the website is focusing on gear for the roads. So imagine that like you have managed to like outfit that van with like the, the furniture kit you wanted. Now you have to think about all the, the objects that will you know fill that space. And uh, so we have a very carefully curated selection of products that uh, will allow you to um, you know, live on the road like a, 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 in in a, in the most fulfilling way. So products that are you know space optimized, solving specific issues from life on the road, from all aspects of life on the road, from laundry to bedding to like having dogs on the road to eating, outdoor cooking, outside, inside, you name it, we have it all. That's so cool. And so for the kit, some people might not know what a kit is um, that they can put in their van. What kind of components do your kits have, and how do they work exactly? Absolutely. That's a great question. Well, a uh, an empty van is basically an empty home, right? So like we have kits from that range from just the beddings to the panel kits to the flooring to uh to all in one kits. Uh so the idea again is like IKEA for van life. So um it's um it's you know you get in the mail like uh, something that you get to build like over weekends and uh and it will you know obviously it will be like at the right dimensions of your your interior so if you get a sprinter we have kits that will have the you know include the kitchen the bedding the cabinets uh and and the structural uh, aspects of it as well so like ceiling flooring uh and wall panels yeah, I have some people write to me and they have like a minivan, for example, and they're like, I just don't know how to build this out. And I think you have, there's a kit on there for a minivan, right? Yeah, absolutely. We have minivans and we have also like a, a new category that's very exciting uh, is like truck campers. A lot of people will have like SUVs, Forerunners, um, and, and, you know, like a lot of people have spent a lot of time designing the right like slide out kitchen and everything. So like we have those as well. So basically the idea, I mean, the vision is like any space that has wheels on it, under it. Uh, we'll have a kit that has been built and designed specifically for that space so that you're able to, you know, not spend all the money on tools, time uh, and resources and instead get a kit that can build yourself in a weekend, which is fun, uh, which is easy and which most importantly will get you on the road fast. Totally. And how did you find the, the companies that you decided to put on your site? Well, that's the fun part for me. It's like I'm geeking out about this thing and I have been for such a long time um, that like I just, you know, every day I'll dedicate an hour or so just looking at like new products, uh, new solutions. I've been to shows representing simpler ways, of course, but also as like a, 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 a you know, amateur builder myself. Um, and now, I mean, in 2023 compared to 20, 2016 and 2017, there's a lot of resources out there like your blog uh, that has, you know, so much information that's very useful. And so um, it's it's a matter now of like, you know, scanning that information and applying like my my own filters so that um, whatever is available in simple ways fit the kind of like um, the criteria is I feel are important for someone and for like from from the how solid and robust the thing will be, the, the overall design, the aesthetics of it, which is important because we're talking about homes. Um, so all that is kind of a, a, the part of my job that I still enjoy quite a bit. And I'm fascinated to see that like every every week I, I discover, I still discover a new, uh, either a new player or a player that's been around for some time that's somehow I didn't hear about. Um, it's a very rich ecosystem and a very fascinating one. Yeah, and I loved your your website. I'll just um, say it again. It's called Simpler Ways. There'll also be a link um, below in the show notes. People can go look at your site. But when I first looked at it, I was like, oh, cool. This is like an REI or an outdoor store for vans. It's so hard to find that. I feel like all the companies are just working on their own and you can't always find a collection of really cool products. So that's what I liked when I first went to your site. And I'm guessing you were going for that kind of aesthetic with it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that that thank you very much. I'm glad I'm glad you you saw that. Yeah, and um, so in terms of the interior components, what are some examples of like fun things, or not the build kits, but things people can add to their van? What kinds of things do you have for interior, um, like? Silver, like cooking ware and stuff. What are some examples? Absolutely. Like, uh, I, I, I think like, uh, well, I mean, the, the kind of like go-to that you can think of for vans is anything that like is space optimized, right? So like foldables, 
or 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 items like this. We have a section I'm really really happy about, which you know is not uh, not it's not meant to like to, to it's not a money a money making se section, but it's a section that has DIY tutorials. For example, we can download uh, tutorials to make your own like a food hammock, for example, or your own like straps or attach things. Uh, but I think like uh, overall, like all the sections or all those products have in common that idea of like solving a specific problem. Uh, in, in van life so for example we have like foldable uh, laundry basins uh, or we're about to add, uh, add like a, a laundry bag that like you can kind of like move around to to make your own laundry without having to to go to a laundry station uh, and that's just one of the aspects but like uh, for for any other other aspects of life on the road we're trying to find the products that uh, will make you think oh i didn't know that existed and it makes a lot of sense Totally. And in looking at your website, you also have a whole section on like surfing. Um, why did you include uh, surfing in your, your site, for example? Uh, well, the, the, the section about surfing came with uh, the discovery of this new product that uh, we added a few months ago, which is a, a, um, a mat, like a shower mat. Uh, and actually it's mainly it's a changing mat for like surfers and it's made of recycled algae it's super light uh, and when I found that I think it was on Instagram I was like this will make so much sense for our audience um, so I edited, I edited it as a shower mat but then I realized that a lot of people were um, uh we're also like you know surfing on the road, and it, it makes sense. It's part of the the I think the 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 the, the mentality, um, and so we started adding like a surfing category. We have a yoga category, and we'll probably keep adding categories that make sense because we see that our audience are you know like aficionados of like that specific sports or activity. Um, so whenever it makes sense, and it's something that we see across like the. The, our family of like uh, modern nomads uh, will add it and uh, and and that's kind of like the project be, be behind the uh, simpler ways very cool and so what's your overall like goal with the, with this business what do you hope to accomplish uh the overall goal for me uh, my well by the, the the vision for the business is that uh will become we, we will become like the the one-stop shop for anyone who's thinking of doing a uh, a van life built um and uh they will find there like resources like uh, it, it, we, we want it to feel like a family it's like you know buy nomads for nomads um and and hopefully people will uh will see that behind the brand and will come for that right like recommendation of products that have been proof tested uh for the road so that they have to they spend less time doing the research because we did it uh and my personal goal is like is uh for this obviously to uh, you know, become a source of uh, income. But beyond that, I think like uh, I want to inspire more people to uh, embrace like you know a mini a more meaningful uh, lifestyle. And uh, and my my dream is that it goes beyond just the 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 van community and just like you know like tiny living as a whole. Um, because I I I do think that like our um, you know modern society has gone a little far in terms of you know accumulating things that we don't need or even what we were talking about earlier like you know the usual like the daily grinds and we tend to forget that you know a life is made for living and I think that uh, having a, um, a, a you know embracing a, a tiny life is uh, one of the 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 way to fast track that kind of like realization that maybe there's more out there to to explore and to to discover that's so true i just love what you're doing and yeah is there anything else you wanted to say about about your new business uh well i i i would invite anyone who hasn't heard about it or haven't been on the platform to go check it out um because I, especially like over the next uh, the next year, twenty twenty three is going to be big for us because we're we're going to consolidate our offering uh, with the kits. Uh, right now, there's not much tutorials, but like we want to expand on the tutorials as well. Like we want it to be become a digital library in which anyone that has made a tutorial for anything related to Van Life can post their tutorial there. So if uh, anyone in your audience that's listening to us today uh, has that, uh, feel free to reach out to us. We'll you know if we want it to be. A platform in which anyone that has something to contribute can contribute and uh and and obviously get rewarded for it um so that's my second message and uh yeah i'm very excited for for it and hopefully it grows to become the 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 centralized resource for everybody um especially for the newcomers uh the newcomers to the van life community 
Very cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on and talking about yourself and your new business. And yeah, people can find the link in the show notes, but simplerways.co. And yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me again. It was it was a great pleasure talking to you and uh, and I hope to see you soon.